Key skill six, we are going to be looking at some tricky variations on the binomial expansion. So two main spins on the question. The first one we're going to be looking at what to do if you suddenly have three things inside the bracket. Don't panic. Or what to do if you have double brackets. So let's get going. If you have three things inside the bracket, that's pretty scary. What I want you to do is still think about or lay out your problem as if there would be two things inside the bracket. And you do this by grouping this to be A and this to be B. So we're going to set it up in the same format as previously. So we've got power 3. So we're going to have 3 choose 0. You guys know the drill by now. 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3. It doesn't matter which one you pick to ascend or descend. So we're going to have 1 plus x power 0, 1 plus x power 1, 1 plus x power 2, and 1 plus x power 3. And in the final column, we're going to be dealing with x squared. x squared. So if this is on 0, this one needs to go on 3 and go backwards. So x squared x squared 1, x squared 0. So the structure is exactly the same. The only thing is we've got two things inside this bracket instead of one. So the first column, we did 3 choose 0 to 3 choose 2. We started the a, which is made up of 1 and x, from 0 and went to 3. And we did this one going backwards. I recommend that you put the two lowest powers, so in this case, x power 0, x power 1, together to be your a. Now, do you guys remember Inception, that movie about like the different levels? Well, we kind of have a problem like that. We have a binomial expansion question inside a binomial expansion because we need to get some of the answers for these ones. Now, this is own little mini binomial expansion problem. Obviously, with x power 0, you don't need to binomial expand. That's going to be 1. And even if it was just power 2, I'd probably just multiply out the brackets. But this one here, we're going to need to use the binomial expansion. So you can set up your mini binomial expansion. Or if it's quite a simple one, you could use your Pascal triangle. So I'm going to do this in red because basically what I want you, want you guys to know what I'm doing is I'm doing this one here. Okay, it's not red, it's purple, but you guys get the message. So I'm trying to get the specific answer for this bit. So, so this would be 1 power 3, 1 power 2, 1 power 1, 1 power 0. And this would be x, 0, x1, x2, x3. This is going to be 1. This is going to be 3x. This is going to be 3x squared. And this is going to be 1x cubed. So that answer I'm going to replace here. Generally speaking, I find it easier to put the longer answer like this. So this answer is 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed. The same here, I'm going to replace, swap this around here. I know you can multiply out the brackets here to work it out by doing 1 plus x times 1 plus x and you'll get 1 plus 2x plus x squared. So the tricky thing about having three things inside the bracket is you create a second mini binomial expansion which you need to do separately and then you can replace the answers. So what's this going to look like now? This is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be x power 6. So we've got 1x power 6. Here, this is going to be 3. This is going to be, again, I think it's maybe going to be easier. I should have written these guys the other way around. This is going to be 3 times x4 times by 1 plus x. Well, you've got to multiply out the bracket here. So... This is going to be 3x4 plus 3x5. The same thing here. You've got to multiply it out. 
this is going to be 3x squared times 1 plus 2x plus x squared. I'm going to duplicate the page so we've got a little bit more space to work with. If you want to download the notes, check the link in the description. So this is going to be 3x squared plus 6x cubed plus 3x power 4. So these are our answers so far. And this is the last one. This is going to be here, x power 0, which is 1. This is also going to be 1. So actually, the answer for this line would just be 1 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x cubed because it got times by 1. Now, you need to take your three, uh, sorry, you need to take your four terms and add them together. But you've got to be thinking about what are the like terms. So we've got x power 6. Now we need x power 5. So I've got one term here with an x power 5. Okay, that's it. So I've got the x power 6, 3x power 5. What about x power 4? Well, I've got one here and one here. So two terms with x power 4. 3x4 plus 3x4 is 6x4. Let's go down. We're going to go to x cubed. And just go down until you've added all of your like terms together. That rounds up how you need to deal with brackets that have three things inside and the power on the outside. Now, if you have two brackets, this isn't too bad. Basically, this one here is going to require a binomial expansion. I'd start by doing this separately. So 2 minus x power 4. So set it up like always. Okay guys, so 2 power 4 is 16, so it would be 1 times 16 times 1. This would be 4 times 8 times minus 1, so this would be minus 32x. I'm just going to plug the rest in the calculator to go a bit quicker. Okay, so we've got an answer for this part of the expansion here. So all you need to do then is sub it in. So, so here we can replace this part here from the answer that we got, right? So I'm just going to write it in, 16 minus 32x plus 24x squared minus 8x cubed. plus x power 4. And to finish this off, all you need to do is multiply this bracket with this one. So you would get, when you multiply it by 1, the bracket wouldn't change. And I'm going to multiply it by x. I'm going to write it in columns so it's easier for me to simplify. So x times 16 would be 16x minus x times minus 32 would be minus 32x squared, and I'm going to keep going along like that, plus 24x cubed, and then you just want to add your like terms together, that's the advantage of having all nice and neat in columns, so it would be 16 minus 16, I don't know why I'm doing this in the calculator, And that finishes you off. So if you've got double brackets, use your binomial expansion on each bracket separately or one bracket if you need to, and simply multiply your answers together and add up the like terms. It's pretty simple. The last question is tricky. I'm not going to lie. We have to find the coefficient of x cubed in this expansion. Now we've got two brackets. We need to think back to the general term formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the general term for each of the brackets. So let's start with this bracket here. What's this general term going to look like? Well, its general term is going to be 7 choose r times by 1, for example, 
power 7 minus r. Again, we don't need that because it's 1, so it's always going to be 1. And 2x power r. So that's going to be this general term. Okay, now I'm going to make a general term for the second one. This is take 2 because I made my life difficult. Don't make your life difficult. Put the letter on the x. So in this case, you would have 3 choose, let's say, p. You can pick any letter you want, just don't use R, we've already used R. 3 power 3 minus P and minus X power P. It's easier for your own sanity to keep the single letters, not the N minuses on the X's. Reorganize it. So we'd have 2 power R here, 3 power 3 minus P minus 1 power p, and you'd put the r's at the back, right? So you'd have x power r, x power p. So just like before, you want the numbers at the front. Oh, I've lost the 3p. And just do a little audit. Check you've got everything. I've got that one. I've got that one. I've got x to the r. Add these two together because we're multiplying. Right, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We want to find the coefficient of x squared. So we need to think of the different combinations for r and p. Okay, so for example, if r is 0, what does p need to be? Well, p needs to be 2 because we could get 0 plus 2 would give us an answer 2 and we're looking for x squared. If r is 1, p needs to also be 1. Or if r is 2, p needs to be 0. So these are the three different ways that we can get x squared. So all you need to do then is sub them in one at a time. So the first one would look like this. I'm going to do 7 choose 0. Now p would be 2. 2 to the r, 2 to the 0. So this would be first combination. 2 to the 0, 3 to the... And then you're going to work that out. So the first one would have given you 9x squared. You just need to go through each of these three combinations and add the answers together. Just like the same way, when we were getting the answer for x squared, there was more than one x squared terms and we added them together to get the final coefficient of x squared. Perfect. So in this, uh, in this expansion, there was three different ways, there's three different terms that would have been x squared terms, and we're going to plus them together. 1,899 x squared, if we were to multiply all of this bracket out and all of this bracket out, and look only at the coefficient of x squared. That last question was pretty tricky, and I haven't seen it in the exam questions yet. I just want to open your mind to some more difficult versions of things that you've already seen. But if that was too much for you, don't worry. That would be a very high level question. In our seventh and final key skill, we're going to be looking at what you can do when you have unknowns either inside or outside the bracket. I'll see you in the last video.